That is Look a at dandy. them rear tines. 14 inches. That's a dandy. Woo! So I'm going to attempt to do some narrating here. These are just some um, deer that I saw while I was hunting deer that I didn't want to shoot like first, second, third day. They were just, you know, they're nice deer, but I had a whole week to hunt, so I didn't want to just shoot the first one I saw. The nice thing about hunting out there is you see deer every morning, you see deer all day long, and you see deer in the evening. It's just amazing. Um, it's so different than hunting in like other states I've been in, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, kind of the Midwest, uh, where you go out west, you can see so far that, I mean, you literally can see deer all day long, either feeding in the morning, coming off of crop fields, or down in the valleys if you walk across, or you know, get down below the skyline and walk the edges, you can jump deer. Um, one morning I saw, I think I saw 50-some deer one day in the morning, you know, till like 11 o'clock or so, and then they go to bed, and we go get some lunch, and then we go back out and hunt in the evening and sit and try to try to get basically between the uh, crop fields and where they're going. Sometimes you see them like this, middle of the day, just laying out in the open. It's not like I said, you know, in the Midwest, you got all the cover, so the deer stay in the cover. Um, this spot right here, there was some deer back in there that I, when I got the camera off, they disappeared back behind the ridge. I couldn't see what they were. But then there was these two little spikers just kind of lay on the hillside here. I'm, I'm probably 400 yards away. And if you walk towards them, you know, they'll run. But if you just walk kind of angle away, they don't go anywhere. This was one of the first nights I was sitting. I was in an area where last year I had seen some really nice deer. And, um, right now I'm probably a half mile away from the ones. You can see the white butts down there from the muleys. Um, these were coming towards me, this doe and fawn. And there was three more that came towards me, does and fawns. And then uh, I sat right till dark and I was hoping that one way to the back there, I don't know if that's the one in the center of the camera, yeah, the one that was in the center of the camera there. I was hoping he'd come towards me because he was at least a three or four year old, real nice deer. I, I don't know if I would have shot him. I mean, he was nice. I just couldn't tell because he was so far away. Like you can see him right there. He's got a decent rack on him, but I just couldn't see if he was a, you know, five by five, if he had any junk, if he was real wide. It was kind of hard to tell because he was so far away. Uh, but this new camera I got that you're seeing these images with, first time I've ever used it, it's got a 20 power zoom, so I can zoom quite a ways. You'll see when I back out away from this how far away I am. I'm, I'm at least a half mile away, I would guess. Maybe a thousand yards, 1,200 yards, I don't know. It was, I was a long ways away. And even with my binoculars, it's just a, I got a 10 power set of Vortex binoculars. I mean, you can see them, but not really well. Uh, most of the shots out there, we try to get within two to three hundred yards, because it's so hilly. We try to do is you know spot them and then get around on the you know the downside of a hill and get around in front of them or off to the edge or whatever. Um, a lot of days like this were real windy. Uh, we had two or three days with just no wind at all, uh, but most days are like this where you get a lot of wind and it's 34 to mile an hour winds and you know if you don't hang on to your truck door when you open it's going to get ripped right off. Um, again, just a couple, you know, there's a spike and I think a two-year-old, was. they were together there. The next one coming up is, it was a early morning hunt. I was just um, looking kind of as the sun was coming up and these two bucks went up the hillside and they're probably, I would say, a good 600 yards away from me. You'll see when I zoom up here, I mean, it was quite a ways away. They were decent bucks, I mean, not monsters, but probably I might have shot them, I don't know. I'd, wasn't close enough to shoot, so. Uh, but you can see when I zoom out here how far away they are. I mean, they're, they're they're out there quite a ways, but they're right along the skyline. And uh, the camera had a hard time focusing because it was aiming right at the sunrise as the sun was coming up. This buck right here was a pretty nice one, but 
I didn't shoot him. I think this was like the third or fourth day. Um, I think he was probably 200 yards away, maybe 250 at the most. Um, he was okay. He didn't have real deep forks in the back. Um, for those of you that hunt muleys, you know the back forks. It's kind of nice if they're nice deep forks. He just had little like finger size forks on his back tines. Nothing real spectacular. Um, you'll see in some of the pictures at the end of the video you're watching right now. Uh, I put some pictures in from last year and then of course some from this year too. There's some still photographs you'll see at the very end of the video here. But Beautiful countryside. Um, you can just see literally for miles and miles. I mean you can see for 10 miles from some places. I can see where people that hunt out there all the time have spotting scopes and you know they just drive around and they go up on the top of these bluffs and they just look for better deer and they try to figure out a you know an ambush where they can get downwind and get around in front of them and cut them off and and hunt like that but it sure is nice having so many deer um, to, to look at all day long I mean it's so enjoyable compared to sitting in a tree deer hunting in the Midwest where you can see 20 yards and you're happy to see a deer you know in a whole day of hunting there's a little bit of our camp there's the the muley my brother oh, eric right. shot and there's kenny and eric what do you think of them apples pretty nice Not bad. a nice one and a ginormous one i should have <laughs> let go one and a monster i almost let this one go only because i didn't know how big it was i thought it was more like the size of his and then we walked down and looked at it and it got Normally you have ground shrinkage, but this one had ground, ground growth. Turned out okay. You got more bone around the back two times than I got in my whole head. Ah, that's <laughs> nice, ain't it? <laughs> Still debating on whether to get him on it because I don't know. He doesn't have a real pretty face, but he's got a hell of a rack. Yep, that's a good one. The boys are on their way. I'm a little ways away and I just shot at my deer. And they're circling around to come get me. <laughs> right now I'm, I don't know, maybe two miles away from them. So I left my deer about a mile back. I'll show you where. Just got to stand up here. Oh. I just got up this hill. That big hill. The deer I shot is back. Right there. Right in that valley right there. He was back in the valley right in the center. And I shot him on the hill right in the middle of the screen and he ran this way and he died right in there. So that's where he is. So they're gonna come get me. We're gonna go get some lunch. And then we're gonna go get my deer. Yesterday I was here about this time of day, just coming out from hunting. And there was a herd of elk right down here in the valley. There was a six by six, a spike, and then a whole bunch of cows and calves and uh, they went down the, the valley that way. The river is down where you see those thick trees way down there. That's where the river is. That's where they ran to. Beautiful out here. Absolutely beautiful day. It's about 40 degrees. Sun is shining. Birds are singing. Last year I shot a, my muley right in this valley right here. He was right down in there. Well, here I am. It's three hours later. I went back to camp, got lunch, packed up a bag. I got my backpack right there. That's what I use for packing the meat out. I got plastic bags, glad bags, my knives, and uh, a couple bottles of water. Everything I need to cut the deer up. And uh, I'm just gonna scan kind of where I just came from. So yeah, if you see that peak out there, there's the truck. Right now I'm about, uh, it's gotta be a good mile away. And camp's about a mile and a half back beyond that. So, cause I've been hunting this, this drainage right through here and then over, as you see back over there, I've been hunting that drainage. So anyway, I just walked up the hill. I got to where the buck's laying here. So I'm gonna walk up here and here's where he's laying. This is where he fell. And uh, I'm gonna walk past him and show you where I was sitting. Anyway, there he is. He's not a monster, but he's a buck. And 
I'm happy because it was a really fun hunt. I'm going to show you kind of what happened. Well, this is the trail he came down and there was literally no blood. I didn't find one speck of blood. I just kind of had to do a body search. I knew I hit him, but it's the trail he came down. I'm going to walk over to the area where I shot him. So he's, I'm about 200 yards from where I shot him. And uh, I'm just going to walk over there and show you what happened and walk back to the deer and then get to work cutting them up and carry them out. It warmed up. It's about, I don't know, 50, 52 degrees, something like that. Sunny, slight breeze. So I stripped down to just real light clothes. But I'm going to go over the field over here. So this morning I came from on the valley down over this way. I came down through here and I was down, oh, about halfway down this hillside. And my brothers and my brother-in-law were over there on the hill and they spooked up um, five white tails, all pretty nice ones. And they ran across and then down into the valley um, over on this side over here. And I saw them go in, so I knew they were gonna come this way because there's all fields that direction. So I knew they'd come this way for bedding. That was, I don't know, about, 8 30 this morning something like that so i came from up here and i got right up over in here in this area and right behind that bush right there was a nice mule deer but i didn't know it was a nice one i had it in a scope for oh probably a good 15 minutes just standing there staring at me it was behind the brush i couldn't see what it was i knew it had horns i didn't know what it was and he won the standoff i put my gun down and then he turned his head and i saw he had a nice Nice wide rack. It was a, it was definitely a nice buck, a three, four year old. And then he ran down into the brush. I never got a shot at him because he was just, he disappeared instantly. And I just stood still thinking he was going to go at the back side. But at the same time, I knew all those other deer were coming up right through here. So I just waited and waited and waited. And then this was, I'm downwind now. So then I came around this edge and I got up to right here. Um, I was up on the, where that little black brush is right there past the oaks. And a doe and a fawn came running through here. And then a little six pointer came running through and they came right around that corner. So I was just sitting right there. Then the big up, big buck, he came off that hill right there running towards me. And I thought he was gonna come around just like the does did around the corner, but he ran right down in here. So I crawled on my hands and knees from that corner all the way up to right about, oh, probably this brush right here. And so he busted out right down in this area here. So I was only maybe all oh, 60, 70 yards. And when I saw him, he was halfway down the rise and he was wide open running across through here. And I got a shot off right here and I shot off right there. And then he disappeared down the hill there. And I looked all over, couldn't find any blood. And uh, so you see that oak tree, right? They can zoom in it here. That oak tree, he's down below that right there. So I just started zigzagging. And then what I did is I went on that side of the, uh, the drainage on the right hand side there. I walked down about 100 yards or so and coming back I saw him laying behind uh, that oak tree right there. He was laying right up in there and he, I saw his head up there and his head went down. He laid down on the ground right, right in there and uh, so then I shot while he's laying down and I saw his head go down and he just laid there. I thought well I got him so I walked over there and uh, so anyway turn the camera on so you can see me so not that's a big deal so I walked over there he was still breathing I thought well I'll just wait so I kind of kneeled on I was maybe 20 yards away from him he picks his head up and he looks back at me and I thought he's gonna take off running because his ears were wide up and his eyes were open and everything so I shot him again so I hit him all four times so I didn't hit him in the rear but the first shot broke his right front leg and second shot I hit him in the, the guts I think and then the shot from over on the other side there I think I spined him because I don't think he'd get up, but he had his, his rear end was down. And then when I got back over here, then I shot him in the back of the back of the neck, and he finished him off. So now we're gonna do some work and get him cut up. So here he is. Nothing special, just a deer. But it was a lot of fun. The way I got him is what made it fun. Um, I don't think he'll even score 120. I mean, not a monster, just a deer. But it was a lot of fun, and I would. I'd take this any day over shooting a deer out of a tree. It, uh, the spot and stalk and uh, sneaking up on them and spending the whole day going through these valleys, absolutely a blast. It's by far the most fun way to hunt there is. Um, so anyway, I got a lot of work to do. I got to get them cut up and uh, pack them out. So I got to get busy.
There we go. She's all cut up. I'm ready to start the uh, the grueling journey. So questions you're gonna have is uh, yeah, I cut it up all myself, and I do it in the no gut method. What I do is I I skin the back down all the way, roll the hide all the way forward, cut all the neck meat out, take the loins out, cut the front shoulder out, take the rear end, and then I roll it over and I do the hide the other way. We did that a couple times in Alaska when we were moose hunting. It's the easiest way to do it by far, especially if just one guy. Whitetail's easy, but a moose, you gotta, gotta roll them over so it takes a couple guys. So that's it. Another question, probably gonna ask. Nothing special. I have a stainless steel composite stock. Model 700 Remington, 270 with the Leopold. What do I have here? Three and a half, three and a half to 10. That's what I've shot with now for a long time. I don't know. I've shot dozens of deer with it. And yes, that's just tape on there. I use this tape when I have to tape the end of my barrel when it's raining out. So I just take a piece off, stick it on there so I don't get water in there. So I'm gonna go for a walk now. I'm gonna go that way for about a mile and a half. It'll be fun. See you in a little bit. I started on the other side of that tree right there. That is a white oak or bur oak. Came down the trails, down to the water, across through here. And I'm taking my first break. Cause I gotta go up to the top of the hill up there and then go across, down, then up another hill. So I got two big hills to climb and I'm already sweating. So I thought of a couple other questions you guys are gonna ask. Yes, I use black tape, it's just electrician tape, it's not pink tape. Uh, I use that for my rainy days. If I'm walking with a gun on my shoulder, because I've had a lot of times where it's raining hard for the raincoat and you get water in your gun, so I put tape over the end of it and uh, works pretty good. Uh, where I'm hunting, that's another thing you guys might ask. I'm in the Dakotas, secret spot, beautiful place. This, we had two days in a row now of no wind, otherwise it's 40 mile an hour winds all the time, so it's just beautiful. Sun's starting to go down already now, so it's cooling off. All I got on is this, this t-shirt here and I'm sweating like a hooker in church. So the pack probably weighs 50 pounds. I don't know, I just take all the meat. It's gonna, normally I wouldn't cut it off this soon, usually I like to hang our deer for four or five, six days cool temperatures but there's no way we're dragging this one out of here and if i left it there's coyotes everywhere coyotes would have got even though i could have put a couple stinky shirts on it would have helped but i cut it up and this meat's all going to be ground up into hamburger except for the tenderloins or the back straps so um so there it is i'm going to put my pack on and start walking some more So I saw a really big whitetail when I came to the top of the camera. Ran up the other ridge over there. I turned the camera as you can see. He ran over about a 30 yard swat and ran down in the other edge. He was right over here. He ran from that bush right there, crossing down and in. Too bad I already got one. I always I'd go after him. Give you a little panoramic here. So last year I shot my mealy right down this valley. We were hunting down the river last night, way down, way down there. And uh, 
yeah, this one that I just saw, he probably 150, 160 inch or right, right down into that valley. Oh man, I'd love to go after him. But it's not gonna happen because I'm done. My tag has been punched. So it's the second to last day. We're done hunting because we're all filled up. And uh, this is my favorite brother-in-law. My only brother-in-law is married to my one. sister, Tim. <laughs> this is the buck he got. He got a, a muley last night. And then he found a big shed there. What do you got there? 11 pointer. Yeah, that's a nice white tail. That's a dandy. I'm sure right. it's probably so, gonna, probably gonna score 145, 150 maybe. So I found this white tail skull after I missed the first buck. <laughs> at 300 yards. I found these sheds after I missed the second buck. <laughs> then I shot this guy last night and I found this shed. You're a regular horn collector. I'm a bone collector. Yeah, there you go, all right. So here is, this is my brother Eric's mule deer he shot and he found those two sheds. That's my white tail I shot and the three sheds that I found there. But the real winner is this guy. This is my shed. <laughs> he found a shed. That's all I found. No. But he did shoot the first day here. That's Half a day. hour in a day. First thing in the morning. That is Look a at them rear tines. 14 inches. <laughs> 